Hey gang, it is Wednesday. That means it's hump day. Chad, you're not going to come on and do it? Chad? Hump day! Hump day! All right, now I'm happy. Anyway, everyone, welcome to Dennis in the Know. This is your backstage pass for current trends, politics, and education in the dental world. It is live, as always, and tonight... It is over a bottle of The Prisoner. Not the most expensive bottle out there, but always especially delicious. So we've all got our drinks. Hopefully you all have your drinks. We've got an incredible show tonight. As I said, we are the dentists in the know. All of us are educators. All of us are business owners. All of us are obviously dentists. Our job is to bring all of you in the know. But tonight, we've got a special guest. You know what I'm going to say? We've got them. You guys need them. You're going to be hearing from Howard Glazer tonight. So we're excited to have Dr. Howard Glazer on. It's going to be a terrific show. Anyway, I hope you all are having a, a great week. I know the holiday season is, is busy for everyone We've got an incredible guest tonight. Dr. Howard Glazer is with us. Uh, we're going to talk about everything from his uh, incredible program, Smiles in the Sun, that happens this April, to uh, all of the uh, restorative materials that, that he lectures about and, and even some of the uh, technology that he works with. So looking forward to that. But in the meanwhile, I think JB might have some news for us. Shall we dive right in? Absolutely. Keep it classy, JB. Oh. Keep it classy. All right. So first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in with the shameless plug portion of the news tonight. So as I posted and upset many of you this week, uh, there were two potential awards. One we were nominated for, which was through Dr. By Cusped for Dental Influencer of the Year. And the second is an opportunity to be recognized. What, what, what? <laughs> the second is an opportunity to be recognized as one of the top dental podcasts out there. And that's through dentalpodcast.org. So there were several opportunities this week as the year is winding down to start recognizing hopefully the best of dentistry in 2022. And I will be honest with you, when I saw our name, I just happened to stumble upon it when I was reading my Dr. By Cuspid newsletter for um, for the month. And I saw our name on it. I, I was sort of flabbergasted. So I'm, I'm, I know I speak for all three of us when I say how just truly honored we were to even see our names on the list, um, how far we've come in just a short period of time, but two, how much we humbly would ask for your vote. They close on December 18th at midnight. It's a great opportunity to recognize not only us, but actually quite a few of the guests that have been on our show over the last two years um, and their influence in dentistry and some great products and great um, periodicals and articles that have been published as well in dentistry. So really great chance to recognize some folks who are trying to do really good things for our colleagues. So if you haven't voted, this is again my humble ask that you might consider to do so. That is through drbycuspid.com. And then the other one is dentalpodcast.org to recognize one of your favorite dental podcasts for the year of 2022. Now, moving away from our shameless plug portion of the dental news, do you guys all remember the dentist that got charged with murder uh, when he was on an African safari? It's been almost six years ago that that news story hit major headlines coming out of his African safari when they found his wife shot dead. Initially pleaded innocent. In fact, he still claims to the not guilty plea. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth. I believe they no longer believe the not guilty plea any longer. He has been officially charged with murder and a few other uh, international charges coming out of Africa. But the interesting thing is this is now becoming a Dateline story. So I believe this will come out in December, uh, a Dateline story on this particular dentist. I think there may have been a lot of interesting facts, both about the case, about his life before he went on the African safari, and how things have transpired since he returned home. 
So we never, we don't always like to see dentists being uh, in the spotlight, maybe in not such a glamorous way, but it is certainly fascinating that this case is still has, that this case still has legs and still gaining national attention enough to become a Dateline story. So once we get the publication date for that, I'll certainly share that as well. It was an interesting article that came out, a white paper that came out of ADSO, which is a dental service organization support group, um, talking about the latest top trends that they foresee in the dental industry over the next few years. And I don't think anybody would be surprised to see the, the four items that they've really identified in the article. Uh, hiring and maintaining good quality staff was on the list. Uh, the interesting one that uh, I thought was worth mentioning was that they see DSO support being really critical for new dentists coming out of school. So whether that is um, joining group and DSO style practices or opening their own practice in coordination with DSOs so that they have some type of co-ownership or co-relationship with DSOs um, in a more unique way style of practice, uh, it looks like DSOs are going to gain a lot of traction in our younger population. There also seems to be an increased focus on the oral systemic connection, and we're seeing a lot of that happening both in Medicare funding for oral and systemic diseases and their connection together. We're seeing that with the modification of the CDT code book in its entirety, adding modifiers that start to look a lot more like ICD codes and lots of periodical, periodicals and research articles coming out on the oral systemic connection. So they see an increased trend with that as well. And finally, technology being the major driver for enhancement in dentistry. And I don't think many of us would argue with that as well. Lastly, Biden has uh, extended his forgiveness for the federal student loan repayment portion. This is all tied into his student loan forgiveness package that he still in flux with and trying to work out the details and the legality of that particular program. So in the meantime, he's put a freeze on loan repayments, interest, and collections on those federal student loan repayment programs. That's now been extended to June 30th of 2023. So if you happen to uh, own a student loan through the federal government, you should keep up to date about some of the forgiveness and or at least pause activity that's happening for those student loans. And lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, if you're just sitting at your computer right now watching this show, you could have multiple tabs open like I do on my computer right now and could be voting for us on drbycuspid.com's Influencer of the Year. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the guys. Uh, but anyway, we really do. We, we appreciate all the support that, that you all have, have given us over the last two years and um it's it's just been a really fun ride and and uh gosh we got 80 80 how many new members this week and oh that man, was awesome this, this is awesome. i just feel like i'm having fun now and um no other people i'd rather be doing it with than uh than youtube but let's not get all sappy here because we have not a great yet. guest that that needs to come on and we can't all be in tears and our makeup running and all that stuff when he comes on. Right. Just not a good look for us guys. Anyway, Thank Dr. You. Howard Glazer is with us. We have him. You need him. He's coming on tonight. So those of you who have ever seen a Howard Glazer uh, seminar or webinar know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Dr. Glazer has been uh, really an icon in our profession for a long time. He's actually from my home state. Well, I don't know if he's originally from my home state. He practices in my home state, uh, original home state of New Jersey, up in Fort Lee. He is a past president of the Academy of General Dentistry, uh, former assistant clinical professor of dentistry at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. <coughs> I'm a little verklempt. I'm so excited about this. He's a fellow of the American College of Dentists, the International College of Dentists. Um, also, what I did not know about him was his involvement in forensic dentistry as a 
Deputy Chief uh, Forensic Dental Consultant to the Office of Chief Medical Examiner for the City of New York. So definitely want to talk with him a little bit about that. He's got a great CE program, live CE program, like we tell all of you to please keep attending and supporting. And uh, it is really our pleasure to bring on an icon in dentistry, Dr. Howard Glazer. Howard, how are you? I'm doing great. An icon. My God. You uh, are yeah. an icon. I mean, that, you're making me so old. Well, you are. I am old. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you know. You're the only one I can say that to. These people give me crap all the time because I'm the <laughs> oldest guy here. So, yeah. I, you know, it's good. It's good to be old. Uh, supposedly wisdom comes with that. Uh, I'm still waiting, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm hopeful. Yeah. So I enjoy welcome your to the show. You guys, you guys yeah. are fun. I enjoyed the news too. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you. Honestly, it's just JB, a little ditty. Yeah, JB is the brains behind this organization, and I think it shows from the minute we start talking till the minute we go off the air. So um, it is what it is, and and Chad and I are are just the beauty behind the scenes. So That's right. We, we we just make it look good. Yeah, you're just leaning into it. There was a fable like that, Beauty and the Beast, wasn't it? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's also, right. Uh, Prince and the Frog. Them, <laughs> well, we, uh, Chad and I got to know Howard through, uh, through some of our work with uh, Shofu Dental, who has been a, a great supporter, I think, for education in general and for a lot of us as lecturers. And, um, and, and really, uh, it's been great getting to know you, Howard. And why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into education to start with? Um, and we'll maybe lead up to your CE event that's coming up in April. But why don't you tell us a little bit about your early days in practice and, and how you got into education? Sure. Well, my early days in practice, I'm second generation. So my dad was a dentist. And uh, I had the privilege of practicing with him for nearly 14 years. Uh, when I graduated dental school, uh, I did a, a general practice residency. And I would advocate to your young listeners, uh, if they haven't already taken one, to make sure they get, into, get involved with doing a, a general practice residency. There's just not enough time in dental school to learn everything you need to know to go out and pick up a handpiece. Um, and that's one of the reasons New York State instituted a fifth year mandated in some form of advanced education uh, prior to getting a license in the state. So I, I applaud that and I would hope uh, other states would follow. So I got involved because I've, well, first of all, I did radio. So uh, I always had a big mouth in a lot of respects. So why not use it to help educate? I started talking about uh, patient management. I've been involved, as you mentioned, with the medical examiner's office in New York for about 44 years, uh, serving as deputy chief. I don't want the chief position. That's more political, and I'd be the first guy they'd shoot. Um, so I, I work as a deputy chief, and I've been involved with that for, as I said, about 44 years. And that led to doing uh, some courtroom testimony in both civil and criminal matters, um, even testifying in federal court on uh, trademark and patent infringement cases. So it's, it's been a good ride with that. But uh, I actually got involved, uh, a colleague of mine, George Friedman, uh, who I had invited to speak at the Big Apple Dental meeting one year, uh, we got to be talking and he said, you know, I heard you speak at this meeting. He says, you should be doing a little bit more speaking. Uh, he said, you know, nobody's out there talking about impression materials and provisionals. So this goes back quite a while, as you could imagine, right? So I created uh, not only a lecture series on impressions and provisionals, but a hands-on module as well. So I was out there teaching it hands-on because in dentistry, I, I would encourage your audience not only to take live courses, but to take uh, participation courses. You know, as dentists, we're very tactile and visual. If you put it in my hands and I can touch it, feel it, smell it, then I know how to work with it. You know, just hearing about it and, and whether it's in a participation course or for that matter, going to a dental trade show. I know, we, Chad, you and I talked about this a little bit. You know, they they don't go. And that's that's unfortunate because they're missing 
peer-to-peer education, and they're missing education by this. You know, they call them sales reps. I call them resource people because nobody knows their products better than they do. So, you know, I, you and I and, and Jeff and Jennifer, we might know how to use the product, you know, and can give them tips and tricks on that. But if they want to know, the, you know, the story behind the story, you know, the reps are the ones that can really educate them. So there's a lot to be said for that. The, and that's, that's so just true. Local. I was talking about that yesterday with a, with a marketer for one of the dental companies. And, and the reps are a very valuable asset for them because they know the product inside and out. Absolutely. You know, and, and it all snowballed from there. I ended up starting to write. In fact, uh, I wrote the column, What's Hot and What's Getting Hotter for AGD. And I did that for about 14 years. And then I was, um, I moved over to dental economics. And now I write, I have it, you need it, which is basically the same thing. I evaluate three to four products uh, at a time. And then if I like them, they make the podium, they make the, uh, the column. If I don't like them, the manufacturer hears about them. And, and I do that, not, not so that I'm not telling tales out of school, but if you tell them that, they have a chance to change it and make it better and listen to what you're saying. So I think it's a it's a fair approach to evaluating products, not to just come out and say, this is a crappy product. I love it. I love it. I, I love evaluating products. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. As long as they're FDA approved, you know, I'm not a, a lab where I can just take my patients as guinea pigs. Uh, maybe the ones that don't pay, but no, that's another story. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we definitely want to test products when they've all been approved already. So Howard, tell us um, tell us a little bit about some of your favorite products that you've tested along the way, and and some of the things that you like to talk about the most. My grandchildren, but that that's a whole different thing. But I love um, that answer. <laughs> certainly, it's the best club in the world. Um, I guess my mantra lately is we used to talk about being minimally invasive dentists and we still are, and we still should be. You have to respect the health of the tooth and you have to respect conserving tooth structure with whatever the procedure is. Uh, And that goes to, uh, even if you're taking a tooth out, preserving the buccal plate of bone. Okay. So everything has to be conservative and minimally invasive as best you can. But today I switch from minimally invasive in, in my direction of addressing materials in that I think we are now have moved from being reparative dentists, taking out an old alloy and just slamming in another filling of material or putting a crown on a tooth, to actually having a chance because of the materials today uh, to truly become restorative dentists, as we call ourselves. And that goes to the materials that uh, are being, have been developed and are continuing to be developed. So where am I headed with this? I'm talking about We went to the concept of bioactivity, to biomimicry, and now we're into antimicrobial. And I I want to touch on all three of those directions in a little bit. Um, But it's not new. I mean, come on. We had had, uh, calcium hydroxide under alloy, and calcium is one of the holy grail of calcium, uh, calcium phosphate and fluoride. And the only thing was here you took a powder and liquid, mixed it up, put it under a heavy metal filling and subjected it to 32,000 pounds per square inch and expected it to stand up as a base liner. And, and it, interestingly enough, you take out an old alloy, what do you find underneath? Cottage cheese, right? The material's still there. And yes, it did stimulate secondary and tertiary dentin. So it did work. We had that. So then we moved to glass ionomers and glass ionomers were bioactive. What did they give us? They gave us fluoride right? You know, etch, no bonding resin, but you got fluoride benefit out of it. So, and where have we come now? So now we move into the field of, as I mentioned, the Holy Trinity. You got calcium, fluoride, and phosphate. Or you have, as Shofu has, come out with a gyromer chemistry that actually gives you six ions, all of which are beneficial to the health of the tooth, all of which are protecting the tooth. And in particular, the gyromer chemistry, one of the things I really like about it that Shofu has in all their products is the anti-plaque com- uh, concept that they have. You know, when you put the material on and you get that high glossy finish 
uh, whether it's Beautiful Flow Plus, whether it's Beautiful 2, whether it's Fit SA, which is one of their newest composites, which is self edge self adhesive. Uh, when you're when you're and I love things in syringes. Why? That's what I call squirt and shoot technology. Okay, it makes it really really easy to use. Uh, hey, 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 this is PG. This is a PG program. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I, uh, <laughs> I just thought we'd add a little a little excitement to it. Jennifer brought the red color. I figured. What the hell? That's right. You know. Keep uh, it fresh. That's keep, keep it fresh. It keep it current. Um, so I think that's the state of where we're looking now. We're looking at these materials that can draw upon ions from the saliva, can make the restoration more beneficial, more long lasting. You know, I don't know about you. Well, I do know about you. You've got composite restorations in as long as I have. Now, you've got to understand, 45 years ago, I made the choice to not do anything but adhesive resin dentistry. So I gave up alloy altogether pretty much right after school. Um, and you look at restorations that they said were not going to last more than five to seven years. And come on, we've got them in 10, 15, sometimes 20 years restorations. So it goes to technique for sure. It goes to understanding how you prepare the tooth. It goes to understanding that as we were taught early on to butt joint to the enamel. No, 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 no. You've got to have a bevel on your enamel. It comes from the enamel bond strength that we need. I never worry about dentin bond strength. I always worry about enamel bond strength to me. That, that's important. But so as I mentioned, so Shofu has the gymer chemistry and you don't get plaque buildup as high because, you know, our patients are not, you know, one of the biggest lies a patient tells you, oh, yeah, I floss all the time. You know, they floss all the time in the first, the 24 hours leading to their appointment. They floss all the time. And that's, <laughs> yeah. it. And that's it. And then so let's let's they're, they're not alone. Shofu. Shofu sort of led the way with the gymer chemistry, you know, and then you had the uh, the concept of bioactivity, biomimicry, which is really was heralded by uh, Pulp Den Corporation when they came out with the Activa line. And the Activa line drew upon the natural ions in the saliva, the phosphate, the fluoride, and the uh, calcium, which occur in saliva. And because it works in a moist environment, it can draw those ions out and help work within the tooth itself to help secure a healthier foundation for the tooth, a longer lasting. And they came out with a great product. You know, they actually got a patent on their molecule that does some of this, the crystal molecule. And it, it appears in a great product they have called Presto, you know, which is, is somewhat mm -hmm. analogous to a flowable resin, except it's more of a stackable resin, you know. And, and that's interesting because I've always been a big fan, too, of Beautiful Flow Plus. And I know, Jeff, you've used that. We talk about that. Uh, Beautiful Flow Plus is, is to me, the original, the original non-flow flowable, Right. It, you know, it actually, you can build cusps, inclined planes, you know, it, it's a very fabulous material and, and you can do a lot with it. And it has two consistencies, F00 or F03. F00 means if you put a blob on a pad and hold it vertical for one minute, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. It stacks. It stays there. Presto, I would, if, if I had a rate Presto, Presto is sort of like that as well. And it's about a zero one. So it'll move up to one millimeter. And so, and they were, you need to know that because I think there are uses for each of these, for each of these. And then the last one I want to mention and, and give a tip of the hat to is um, Nobio, an Israeli company that has recently reduced, wow, I need more fix it um, <laughs> has uh, recently uh, released a material called uh, Infinix. And Infinix is the first FDA uh, authorized uh, antimicrobial restorative material. And where do, where would this be necessary? There are two populations where uh, dexterity and hygiene are not really great. That's the pediatric population, and the opposite end of the scale is the geriatric population. And we see these, and their dexterity is not developed yet in the pediatric, and they lose some of it in the geriatric. So brushing and maintaining and flossing are not great. If I can put in an antimicrobial composite, such as Infinix, right, that can release a non-leaching antimicrobial component that will protect the health of that tooth and the health of that patient and not allow for sensitivity, to me, that's a slam dunk win. And, you know, to me, anybody treating those populations 
or treating a high risk, uh, car high carries risk prob uh, patient population, or if you're doing mission work, this you got to have this. This is a must have in your composite. Right now, you're limited to two shades, A2 and 3. I know in New York, I met with them and they're, they're coming out with more. They have a, a two-step bonding agent. Yes, you do have to go back to two bottles, but you know what? I'll, I'll accept it because of the value of the product. Um, I, I don't have to always use a universal uh, per se, a one-shot a one shot deal. Um, and they have a flowable resin too, which, which works well. Um, I think, you know, the, the product is great. So I would ask everybody to take a serious look at that one because we all have patients where hygiene is not paramount. So while we're on this, I think, I think another one to talk about that we've kind of, we, we is, is uh, Vista Apex's uh, region and, you know, the region flow with the four or five S5 bioactive glass or bioglass. I mean, that's, that's a pretty fantastic material too, because it's in both the adhesive and the restorative. Um, I, I think there, it's a great time in dentistry when you're talking bioactivity, you know, uh, antimicrobial. There's a lot of great stuff going on in dentistry right now. That's all for the betterment of the patient. Absolutely. That's why I say we truly can become restorative dentists now. We're not just repairing, mm -hmm. you know, something that broke down. I mean, and then they're lasting. They're lasting. You know, Chad, I, I very often tell my audiences, everything I'm going to teach you today didn't exist five years ago. And everything I'm going to talk about today is going to be replaced in the next five years. Because think back in your career. You know, I'm doing this, as I said, almost 48 years now. Um, nothing has changed as rapidly as our materials in dentistry, as we've seen in the last five, seven years. It is just tumbling over itself. I mean, you turn around as a new material, uh, whether it's the region product, whether it's Presto, whether it's Beautiful Flow Plus, Fit SA, and the new one, Nobio, I think you need to be really up on your game. You need to know about these products. And that's why it goes back to what you said earlier. We talked about live education. Come out and speak to the experts, not the ones you see on camera necessarily. Talk to the experts behind the booth. Talk to the ex Go to take live courses. Play with the materials. I mean, dentistry is fun. And it, it continues to be fun. It's a valuable health aid to patient to patients living a long life. But, you know, I, I like going to the office, you know, I yeah. get good stuff. It's, it's a good time. And, you know, the thing is, is like, I think a lot of dentists are so concerned with diminishing their armamentarium, but in all honesty, we need kind of a diverse armamentarium because not every patient's the same. Like, you know, I use Shofu, their, you know, uh, Beautyfill Flow Plus X all the time. But this morning I had a case that I was like, all right, I'm throwing some regen in here just because it was so deep. And I was like, I want to see if this is, this can regenerate. I'm going to use the bioglass on this. You know, there's cases that you go and you look at and you're like, this is a perfect case to cement with Ceramir. Uh, you know, there's, there's, we need to have these things at our disposal and I'm not saying have everything, but do your research and find out which four or five that you need in your practice, because everybody's different. You can't Absolutely. treat everybody the same. Absolutely. Well, it, it, it goes back to the point. I mean, are, are you making the material fit the patient or the patient fit the material? And, and we're in a position where, look, you don't have to stock your shelves with every material, but I think we have an obligation to provide the best we can for each individual situation. And, and so I, I, I totally agree with what both of you are saying. You know, Jeff, go back to look at the diploma you got from dental school, right? It's the art and science of dentistry. Our capabilities to make somebody look beautiful is the artistic portion. The science is understanding the materials. So Chad, like he just in his example, wanted to use something that he thought the patient would benefit more from in doing that restorative procedure. And that's knowing the materials. I get asked all the time, mm -hmm. you know, Howard, you just talked about six composites today in your course. What do you really have in your office? And my answer is usually yes. Because mm -hmm. I, I do have six composites usually at any one time. And I know what each one is. For example, you pick a shade, it's A2. 
every manufacturer's A2 is different than the next manufacturer. There's a formula for A2, but everybody tweaks it. And my example is if you wanted to bake a yellow cake and you went to the supermarket, there are a dozen yellow cake mixes on the shelf, each of them giving you a different shade of yellow cake. And that's why I have different materials. And I've made my own shade guides very often. I'm sure all of you have done that at some point mm -hmm. so that you know what it looks like when it's cured, when it's cured. I remember when Colzer was the first with their Venus Diamond, which is an excellent product as well. Good packable posterior composite for sure. Um, but I remember they were the first one to make their shade guide out of the composite resin itself, not a plastic, not a plastic. And that, that was a key Can you, helping pick it. We've gotten some good questions actually from the audience. So if you'll let us entertain sure. them for a moment. Um, one, I'm going to try to paraphrase this a bit, but what organically modified ceramic direct restorative materials, for instance, like Voku's Admira Fusion, um, in terms of biocompatibility strength, do you have any commentary about these modified ceramic restorative materials and um, which ones maybe you are showing for preference? So, yes, I use uh, the Voco Orem Samir, and, and a lot of times I'll use that. Um, you know, how many of us get patients in, and I want one of those porcelain fillings, you know, and if mm -hmm. you want to be fair, the closest you're going to get is the Orm, the organic modified ceramic resin. I never can pronounce mm -hmm. it correctly, but um, I wish these companies would make things easier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like label them, maybe that, that's that's, a bit yeah. that's the one make. thing I always say as, you know, I mean, all of us have been in this KOL thing and I'm like, why would you make it difficult to say? No, yeah. I mean, it should roll off the tongue. <laughs> yeah. There's a funny video when they, when GC first introduced their genial composite yeah. line. You yeah. know, and they asked, how do you pronounce mm -hmm. this? It's hysterical. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they went around the Chicago midwinter meeting and they were just asking people. It's great. Go back to your question, though, Jen. I, I think there are indications for that in an aesthetic situation where I want something really highly polishable. I might opt to use that material. And so, yeah, that's one of the ones I have in my office, you know, because there's a need Very for nice. it in specific in specific cases. And it's a valid one. Uh, it doesn't necessarily give you as much of the ion component, but I'll trade that off sometimes for the ceramic strength. And it's like okay. what Chad said, you got to know what to use, where you want to use it. Right. right. The other question we had was uh, wondering what you think about the newer composite and ceramic polishing systems that are coming out available to us. <laughs> I got to fall back to Shofu. I mean, Shofu, when I grew up, Shofu mm -hmm. was the abrasive company, right? Greenies and yeah. brownies. It's all you heard was Shofu. I personally think their polishing system is by far the best one in the world. Um, you know, and the tip of the hat to uh, the other composite systems and polishing systems when we had the Softflex disc, which was a great system, but it had yeah. a metal hub. And it was a great system until you got the black line from hell on your composite right. and you had to start all over again. So yeah. if you had the same diameters, the same grits, two-sided, and you, you had no center hub and you made them prepackaged in, in cool little kits of the four sizes in large or small or combination. Yeah. I mean, Shofu Super Snap Singles to me are the, the polishing system. And the only component I would add to it is their direct dia, which is like a diamond polishing paste. A little smidge of that green uh, paste on your disc when you're doing, in particular, the green and wet, the green and red discs. The last the, time. the super you, snap you can, extremes, yeah. super snap extremes, man. You and and I will say, Howard, that green paste is lime flavored. That's pretty badass. Patients yeah. do enjoy that, unless they just have an aversion to margaritas. <laughs> right. <laughs> well. Get a different patient if they have aversion to margaritas. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. They, they sure as hell aren't going to do good in Longboat Key. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. We, uh, we're actually a pretty good tequila group as it is. So so I, I have a question or I yes. have a, a comment to add to that. I I love the Shofu polishers. Um, and, and when people are talking about polishers, one of the things that I want to bring up is if anybody's not tried the Clinician's Choice dailies, I don't know if you all have tried those. 
those are fantastic because of the shape. It's shaped like a disc, but it just kind of gets into all the embrasures. So I'll start with one of the polishing cups or points and finish with the disc. I love the discs to, to go in on those places and the way that it flexes. That's a great polisher as well. Yeah, and their porcelain polishers are very good too. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, those are, I, I yeah. would throw in, yeah, and I would throw in their ASAP polishers. Those that's, are, that's what I'm talking about. They have the dailies and they the have the, the, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the, how they labeled them as originally. You know? Exactly. Yeah. But but there, there's so there's real world dentistry, like where you're doing posterior composites or something, you know, maybe on the facial of, of 21. And then of course there's that highly, you know, critical aesthetic patient that you're going to want to get your discs out to really just do the best polishing job possible. And so, you know, we have to, you know, everyone still has to make a living. I get it. But in those aesthetic cases, I absolutely love the, uh, the, the, the staff extreme. I mean, the, the, the green and, and red with the paste, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely well, phenomenal. So I, I yeah. you've, you've given me a good segue. I, I tease Shofu that they made those specifically after I came out with the Optroscope pad instrument. The Optroscope <gasps> pad instrument. Love. Pad, and it's one of my favorites. Love, love, love that instrument. Love. love it. Yeah. So one of, one of the best comments I get about that instrument, because I with two colleagues actually developed that instrument. And one of the best comments I get is, how the F did you think of this? You know, and the secret that we came up with was closed cell foam. It doesn't stick to anything. Now, manufacturers tell you that they've come out with a non, their composite resin is non-sticky. And that's what I call COS, Croco shit. <laughs> the nature of all composite resins are sticky. That's just the nature of resin. So we came out with an instrument that doesn't stick to anything. And I, you know, there was a, there's been a shift economically where I was doing six, eight and 10 veneer cases. And now sometimes it's driven economically. Well, can't we do something and not do the veneer right now? Yeah. I have to redo something that they had an old composite veneer. And, you know, I use my optoscope pad, either the four or the six millimeter disc, nothing sticks to it. I can do a direct resin veneer in a ridiculously small amount of time. And the instrument leaves you 95% finished and polished. And Jeff, that's where it comes in to use that red and green, because in another minute, you bring up a gloss-like finish. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, a glass-like finish on top of it that will last. That will last. So and Also, a lot more street credit when you're not trying to tap it with your finger. Oh, and, which was and my, that, you know, my old sculpting pad was just I, my well, I always say to the patient the most delicate dental instrument of all time yeah the finger the finger yeah. mm -hmm. you know and you know depending on the size of your hand you get a good you know singular area in the back with your pinky um, right you know but yeah but if you lick it first <laughs> come on did you, did you when you went to dental school do you remember using nose grease to polish the wax yeah yeah, <laughs> I remember that. And you could do a lousy amalgam, but if you use tin oxide, it looked pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know? But, you know, th the fact that we can bring up this kind of a polish and the fact that we had developed this uh, closed cell foam led us to develop the posterior composite instrument, the optoscope pad posterior one, which gives you a 90 degree angulation. And it has a little white ball of closed cell foam. Mm -hmm. When you're pressing down into the box, how do you know when you lift your inch, any other instrument, you're not pulling back? You're not pulling. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're leaving a little gap there, and then you get recurrency. Um, with this, you don't. And that, and that was the premise by we all trained on the sandwich technique at one time or another, right? We put flowable yeah. resin in there first to fill the voids. Well, you, I still go back to that, but when I'm packing composite, it's the posterior one. It, it it just works and it's so inexpensive. I mean, the kit is probably a buck and a half, you know, $150. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy cheap yeah. as far as I'm concerned, but so listen, the how, kids how, make a nickel. What the hell? So yeah. um, we, we have about 10 minutes left and, and I don't want to leave out smiles in the sun. Ah, no, and I have a question to close with Howard. I have a big question for the end. So, okay. Don't forget okay. that Jeff. 
Oh, absolutely. But I, I'm I, look. I'm planning ahead, Chad. You're okay. waiting for the last minute. I'm planning ahead. I I'm just saying we beginning. need to get to this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyway, um, Howard, uh, tell us, first of all, how long has Smiles in the Sun been going on? What was the impetus? What, you know, what started that? And, and, and don't, well, no, you can say you just wanted to drink margarita somewhere nice. That's, That's fine. You, but you hit it on the head. That is okay. You yeah. hit it on the head. It, uh, started, it started in Cabo San Lucas. Uh, we we were three partners at the time. There's just myself and another partner now because unfortunately the third partner had passed on. Uh, but we had gone on vacation in Cabo San Lucas, and we were at the um, oh I'm going to draw a blank on the name of the resort now. But it was a lovely all inclusive, 18 and older only resort. And uh, the Pueblo it was the Pueblo Benito Holistic Retreat and Spa, and we actually won the trip by taking uh, uh, got a coupon for it by taking a cruise through American Express to Europe. So we said, okay, we'll go to this. Well, we had no idea. We didn't ever heard of it, never saw it. Turned out that we walked in the lobby and I wanted my mail phone. You know, I didn't want to go home again. We sat around and we said, we're having a good time. I bet you that we got friends at home that would want to come. So we said, let's put on a meeting here. And we met with the people at the hotel and we organized that we would have a meeting the next, next eight, nine months later. And six people showed up besides us. And it was hard to get vendors in. It was hard to, Shofu was there pretty much from the beginning with us. Uh, but it, it was hard. And we did a really cool thing one day. We took the gardening staff and put hats and shirts on them and sat them in to take pictures like the room was full for the meeting. So we did it two more years. In answer to your question, we left Cabo San Lucas margaritas and all and picked up and moved to the west coast of florida this will be our 14th year uh so the first three in cabo the rest at this hotel we found it we uh, i spoke to the the uh, meeting planner at the time and said we're three dentists we're looking for a new home if you're good to us this will be our home and we have signed contract after contract after contract with them and as you'll see jeff because jeff's one of our stars coming down this year um, at the meeting. We have just a fabulous time. The courses run from eight in the morning and your feet are in the sand by 2.35 in the afternoon guaranteed. Okay, and we do it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, Jeff will uh, kick off our meeting as our first keynoter on uh, Thursday and he will be speaking to us uh, on sleep apnea, uh, which is a very important and say, uh, salient topic. Jennifer Dubrow, from Coleman, Alabama, will join us. She's uh, aces in periodontology and implant. She's college. awesome. Jennifer's amazing. Just a ball of fire. I don't know where the batteries go. You know, uh, <laughs> she, she is the original Duracell bunny uh, for mm -hmm. sure. And then wrapping up, you know, we haven't had we we rarely have a speaker back a second time. It's even more rare that we have a speaker back a third time. But four times returning is. Deborah Engelhart Nash. I oh, think when it, when it comes to doctor staff, doctor patient, patient staff, relations and how to talk, how to converse, there is nobody better. And, you know, and actually not only do we have her back because she's go good and, uh, and we have her on Saturday, but this way Ross gets a vacation out of it. So, <laughs> you know, he says he, he'll come with or without her being on the program. You know, and it's is, nice is that have. her sponsor? Pardon? Is Ross her sponsor? No, I think she sponsors <laughs> Ross, actually. <laughs> Sponsored by Ross Nash. Sponsored by Ross Nash. You know, he, they, they're actually both coming fishing. We hold a fishing tournament. By the way, it's the Shofu Annual Fishing Tournament. They, we sponsor a cash prize tournament on Wednesday. But the meeting itself is uh, Thursday, the 27th of April to the 29th of April, Saturday. It's at the uh, fabulous Longbow Key Club Resort in Longboat Key. This is not the Keys. This is Sarasota. There are uh, the closest airport is the Sarasota airport, about 15 minutes away to the north in Tampa, an hour and 10 minutes away to the south. Fort Myers is an hour and a half away. You've got your choice of airports. Come early, stay long. Our, we have the lowest, we're less than half the rack rate uh, at all times, plus the amenities we get. 
Rooms start at about 305. They're all um, uh, efficiency suite kind of things because they're condos. It's a condo it, hotel. It's a, this is a five-star nice. resort, though. This I mean, I want to stress resort. that. Like, this is yeah. not yeah. like, you know, no. you're not paying for a Holiday Inn Express here. This no. is this no. is like but a five-star resort. You're still going to get resort. smarter. Yeah. But you get very smarter. We call it a sensational educational experience. Uh, you know? and, and by the way, this is a, I lecture in t-shirts and a shorts. No. I mean, you know, t-shirts okay. and flip-flops. I mean, if I get fancy, I put the flip-flops on. But Now, you uh, forgot to mention, I believe this is also at a nudist colony? Yeah, that's optional. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, <laughs> it goes to the number of margaritas or tequila shots. But I do want to mention that... Uh, while we have a tuition of 1995 for the dentist and accompanying members, whether it's staff, spouse, or you want to cheat for the weekend, it still costs you 695 for that. However, we do discount for uh, multiple staff. We offer a student uh, recent graduate discounts. And for your listeners tonight, uh, my partner, Ross Sankin, and I would like to offer anybody who says that they heard about this on the Dink Show. Uh, we'll take two hundred dollars off their tuition for first-time attendees. Chad, I heard a dinky deal. I heard a dinky, a deal. dinky deal. I heard a dinky deal. I heard a dinky deal. Yeah, that's for sure. I think we need a we need like a dinky deal alert, kind of like a bell or something that rings. Yeah, that's not a bad I'm idea. Right here. Yeah. 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 That's hey, right. Bell. Jennifer, I should send it to you for the news alert. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but we'd be happy to that's host right. your folks. That's right. You know, first well, time. Thank, thank you for doing that. Honestly, we, um, you know, that that's one of the things that that we talk so much about is that, you know, that there's a lot of great online education. It is just it is just not the same kind of education as right. what you get in person when you touch and talk to your neighbor and talk to the person next to you and 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 have conversations about the other things being taught and have the sidebar conversations and and really get to exchange ideas with with your peers there's just no substitute for that and there never will be so um thank you for for doing that no and yeah we have and every day there's a lunch and learn with participation uh so you get your hands into it a little bit and we offer different things that we're going to try we're even going to have a hands-on on artificial intelligence this year awesome yeah. nice yeah it's going to it's going to be rather unique and, and rather are you going to have a shoot and score launch <laughs> well, I, <laughs> i'm not going to go there <laughs> i'm not going to go there but recently <laughs> Yeah, that, this is this is what we do. Sorry, Howard. You, well, that's what, listen. That's you agreed a, to this. This is this is on you. You agreed to this. I, I'm, I'm you should have watched a few fine. shows before he said yes. <laughs> I'm fine. You'll you'll see why when we get to our meeting. It's uh, we have a lot of fun. They're a very frank yeah. group, so it, it should be should work well. Chad, I'm dying to know what your big question was. Me too. I am too. Right. So oh, he's got to put his rooters on. He put his glasses on. He's serious. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I just want to prove that I was listening. All right, Howard, I'm putting you on the spot right now. I want to know, in your mind, what's hot and what's getting hotter? Oh, I just I, I just mentioned that artificial intelligence for sure. Mm. Uh, okay. Artificial intelligence. I think uh, the days of having mills in your office are numbered, but the days mm. of having... 3D printers in your office are around the corner. And my my best guess is within the next three years, every dental office will have a 3D printer. And right now, I got to give a shout out to DMG. They've got one of the best compact 3D printer setups from taking any open file system, loading it into the system, and washing it and finishing it all in one very small countertop uh, system. It takes a very little of a footprint. Uh, they are the ones that came out with Luxa Crown. And now don't be surprised. This is a peek under the tent. Don't be surprised if you're going to see a 3D printed crown that will last you maybe five, six years. On that uh, on that note, we saw that in in um, I was at IDS in Cologne, Germany. That's correct. 
and I saw a printer, the last go around that was actually a 3D printer printing zirconia. Yeah. Zirconia so. is one thing they're working on, but I'm talking about something that uh, will, which may help to serve underserved populations. And when you need a long-term provisional, uh, you can get some really cool stuff. There is a, uh, there's a resin being tested and developed right now. Uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that so I don't spill anything. I know. I think that's really insightful, okay. Howard, because I, I would agree. I, I think we haven't even touched on where 3D printing is going. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. It, it's the future. For, and, you know, everybody says, well, I'll make my own aligners. Bullshit. That's not what you're going to use it for. There's a lot of things you will use it for in your office uh, from printing models on you know, to, to doing stents, to doing, you know, more and more implant dentistry is coming about. Uh, it's actually, I, I sat down the other day with somebody as I was doing treatment planning with one of my residents and uh, we can do implants at, the, at our program. And I'm saying, you know, if you added the cost to do a three unit bridge, it's actually less costly and healthier to do a single tooth implant replacement for a missing tooth. Not no a bridge. question not a bridge, you know, yeah. uh, but so that's it. So Chad, I think that's the direction we're going. We're going to get more and more materials that are uh, more oriented to hydroxyapatite formation because that's what really seals. That's why cements like Ceramir are so good that you mentioned because their hydroxyapatite formation, if you look at under SEM over 45 days, you basically can't see the gap anymore. You can't see the gap anymore. So I think there's a move in that direction as well. Our curing lights are getting better, uh, not both in power, but more important in the throw of the direct collimation because something like the Fusion 5 from Dentlight, I have to give them a shout out. When you're doing a deep class two on a second molar, remember you can only get your light down as far as the highest cusp. And this one at least has a seven millimeter direct collimation. So I know that I'm curing my axial gingival level, okay? If you got a thousand watt light mm -hmm. with a two millimeter throw, that's guesswork. That's guesswork, even with layering, even with layering. Incredible. Love it. Well, um, Howard, we are out of time. I knew this was gonna go quickly. <laughs> uh, I knew we would not be at a loss for what to talk about. Um, we really appreciate you coming on the show and we'd love to have you back again and, and talk about other products and, and other technologies. But, um, in the meanwhile, I just want to say thanks again. And we will absolutely be putting out, um, the discount that you've offered for smiles in the sun. So thank you for offering that. And, uh, Chad, why don't you close us out, my friend? I will. I just uh, I just want to say thank you to Howard. I could have gone all night. You and I think a lot alike. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun to chat with you. Uh, I want to thank all of our educational partners, all of our members out there. But I want to do something a little different tonight. Um, I want to thank somebody that people really don't know what exactly they do. Santa? Um, no, this person right here. Yeah. This person right below us, Dr. Jennifer Bell, has put her heart and soul into Dentist in the Know. We have this podcast.org, this Dr. Bicus, but it's not by chance. It's not because of Jeff and I. It's because of the legwork that this young lady right here below puts into this. And Jennifer, from the bottom of Jeff and I's hearts, uh, Amen. We thank you. We, we love you. We can't, we couldn't do this without you. And thank you. in the times that we're down, you lift us up and thank you for everything that you do. Do and I, do I that, really? Or do yeah. I yell at you? No, with that <laughs> being said, I just want to say, please go vote. Uh, Dr. By Cuspid, uh, podcast.org. Uh, thanks everybody, everybody for being a part of this group. And uh, we just hope that we can continue to keep providing for you in the way that we have for the past two and a half years. With that being said, let's have a good night, everybody. Good night. Love y'all. Good night. Good night. Night. And that wraps up another podcast for Dennis in the Know. On behalf of Dr. Jennifer Bell, Dr. Chad Duplantis, and myself, 
Remember that we've got a great profession, so let's make it a great day, Dinks.